Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we've got another kit to look at and this is uh, a little frequency counter um, from the grand price of £4.81 um, off eBay and it's a uh, microcontroller based uh, counter it uses the PIC 16F628 and some LED displays um, it was you know extremely cheap so I've got relatively low expectations but we'll just um, see what it does it looks like an interesting project it's turned up with absolutely no instructions whatsoever a bag full of components and a circuit board um, so I had a look back on the eBay listing and there isn't any mention of instructions however when I looked more closely at the board it actually tells you the component values on the board so assembling it um, shouldn't be uh, too difficult it looks relatively straightforward so we'll give it a, a bit of a clean with some alcohol and uh, start putting some components on and um, see what we get okay well here's the contents of the bag um, laid out on a just on a sheet of paper to make it uh, make them more visible so we've got resistors capacitors a variable capacitor some transistors uh, some diodes we've got the, the chip socket the pick itself and some LEDs and also a crystal here so we'll get on with with populating the board using the the components nearest the board first and um, see how we get on I think if you're a complete beginner you might be ever so slightly daunted by this but if you've got a little bit of electronics knowledge it shouldn't um, uh, really provide um, too much of a concern for you so probably not something to be daunted by okay let's um let's get soldering okay well here's the completed circuit board and uh, as you can see more components populated okay um, I did end up with a, a 22 a value 22 uh, ceramic capacitor left over there's definitely nowhere on the board for it um, I have a bit of a troll around the internet and discovered that uh, the three headers there for the crystal tester which is a feature I don't particularly want um, but the the in and the G are the two ones that matter from a input and ground point of view um, so having checked it all over cleaned off the um, the flux off the back uh, next is to apply some voltage to that barrel socket so I've got a suitably sized um, barrel plug on my power supply um, the circuit board suggests um, DC 5 to 9 volts, um, so I've got about 6 volts at the moment, and plug that in, and as you can see there we get a, I don't know whether you can see that on the camera to be honest, yeah, we get the red um, second digit is displayed. Now I don't find that terribly easy to see against the um, so when I eventually do a box for this I'm going to have to put some kind of slightly darker cover on to cover up some of the segments so as a temporary fix I've just put uh, the the plastic bag that it came in over because that's slightly slightly smoky so I can see the digits a bit better uh, and I've got signal generator running here um, producing a sine wave currently it's um, Right about 900 kilohertz and a voltage of, of 8 volts so I'm going to connect um, neg no, the ne negative side to the G pin and I'm going to connect um, input there and as you can see there we're getting 900.45 kilohertz I've actually got it set to 900.51 so this trimmer capacitor appears to be the one that um, finally adjusts the frequency so I've got a, a trimming tool here so I'm going to just adjust this till I get to 900.51 as you can see it's quite sensitive so that's 900.51 which is what the signal generator is saying let's go to 52 yeah I'm going to go up to 65 yeah and I'm going to drop down to uh, 35 yep yeah, seems to be working okay doing that so um, there we go up and running which is good um, it needs at least 7 volts before um, it'll start reliably reading a signal 
I've discovered this button here also allows you to program various things. If you wanted to use this, say in a home-built rig, you're ac you can actually program in an offset. So if you wanted to program in, say, uh, the um, IF frequency, uh, either plus or minus, so that the display would read the actual tune frequency, um, you can do that, which um, potentially is quite handy as for fitting a display. So that's okay. My signal generator um, only provides uh, eight volts up to up to twenty megahertz. So if I now move to the megahertz range and go up to so that's one point nine megahertz. Actually, it's one point nine oh three five. So I'm going to just uh, zero that and I'll make that 5 just so you can see it so that's 1.905 that is correct so if we go up to 6 there yep yeah, still reading that 11.9 yeah I'm going to get rid of that 0.5 now so we go up to 15 megahertz 15.9 yeah 15.5 yeah, that's reading that okay. Uh, and then up to 19, 19.5. So I'm going to go up to 20. And it does indeed read 20. As soon as I go to 21, the, ca the counter automatically drops its input to 5 volts. And straight away the counter um, sort of loses lock. So if I go back down to um, 20 megahertz and turn the voltage up to... Uh, there's 7 volts, it's reading it fine with 7 volts. So I think it's probably going to need some kind of input amp if I want to use it um, broadly as a, a frequency counter, but uh, certainly at this stage it seems to be working rather well. So um, good, okay, so I'm going to look at a few options for cases now, so maybe, maybe 3D print something. But uh, pleased with that for its four pound eighty one or whatever it was it seems um, seems pretty good really um and can't go wrong for um such a such a reasonably priced kit and it was fairly easy to put together uh, a brief search on the internet brings up um several sets of instructions and uh, even explains the way that the programming works which was a bit confusing to me at first um so that's good um kit finished. Okay we've got three kits um, set up uh, on the bench here now and uh, I've got the frequency counter kit um, running off a 9 volt battery which it seems to do uh, very well. I've got the function generator producing um, uh, a triangle wave which currently we're feeding into the signal gen. Um, even though the uh, output of the signal gen is actually less than 7 volts it uh, actually appears to be reading it okay nonetheless which is good which I was a bit surprised at but I'm not going to complain um, so that's saying we're just under 5 kilohertz there 4.979 roughly and on the DSO138 down here we've got uh, time base set to 50 microseconds per division we've got roughly 4 divisions so if we get the calculator on the go there uh, we've got 50 microseconds, which is 50 times uh, 10 to the minus 6, um, and we've got 4 divisions, so multiply by 4, and we're going to take the reciprocal of that, which gives 5000 or 5 kilohertz as the answer. So bearing in mind I've just roughly guessed that's 4 divisions, I think um, we can safely say that um, it's all working well. So there we go. Okay, so that's the end of the frequency counter kit uh, construction video it seems to be working well next thing is to try and um, make use of some of this test gear and see if we can uh, come up with some meaningful results so if you've enjoyed the video um, please click the thumbs up that'd be great if not you can click the thumbs down either way also be great if you could uh, subscribe and look forward to seeing you on the next video thanks for watching